my misfitians and welcome back to my channel. So today's agenda is first off finish up my cup of coffee um, and I thought I would show this off a little bit. It is a little Snoopy trick or treat which fits today's um, kind of little tutorial that I'm going to be doing and it's kind of going to be a vlog slash tutorial where I kind of walk you through what I'm going to be doing today. And today's agenda, as you probably know from the thumbnail, is we're going to be painting an autumn leaf. And I've already played around with different types of autumn leaves as well as a pumpkin and just messed around. If you want me to teach how to paint a pumpkin, um, I've played around with two different types. Um, make sure to leave a like on this video so I know you want me to do that. For right now, I'm just going to be doing the autumn leaf and I'm going to be doing this one right here. I played around with a lot of different types and just messed around as well as some color swatching down here. So you can kind of see what I do before I actually paint something. So this is kind of my brainstorm sheet. Um, but I'm going to be walking you through how to paint an autumn leaf the way I do, and I actually have changed. I put out a tutorial a while back on how I paint an autumn leaf, and I've actually changed my style a little bit since then. So I thought I would just go ahead and teach y'all my new way of how I paint autumn leaves. So I hope you enjoy this, and let's go ahead and start. So the very first thing that I did was basically gather all my supplies. This is the first thing that I do whenever I'm doing watercolor. I always want to make sure that the supplies that I'm at least thinking about using are within hand's reach because when you're painting with watercolor, you usually do not have a lot of time to make decisions, especially when you're doing more wet on wet, you have to make decisions rather quickly. And this is one reason why watercolor can become difficult because you're trying to make decisions very fast, but at the same time, not overwork things. So it's always good to have your supplies within hands reach. Now, these are the supplies that I'm going to be using. However, you can use any supplies that you really want to, if you want to replicate this particular painting. You can use any paints that you want to, even different colors, but the process is pretty much going to be the same whether you're using different colors or different supplies. Now with that covered, let's go ahead and start. So the very first thing that I want to do is basically lay down a rough sketch and I want my rough sketch as light as possible because I want my paints to really shine through and not really focus on my pencil lines. Now, if you're intimidated with drawing, do not worry. This is going to be very, very simple. If you can draw basic shapes, you can do this tutorial. And I specifically did it this way so that if you are an absolute beginner and you're intimidated with drawing, you can do this tutorial. So the first thing that I'm going to draw and whenever you're starting to draw something with watercolor, don't think of the object that you're drawing as a full shape, rather break it up into smaller shapes. So you're going to understand this in a little bit, but instead of thinking I'm drawing a leaf, first thing that I really interpreted in my head was I'm going to draw a dew drop basically. And that's the first thing that you're going to draw is this little dew drop or this little teardrop on your paper. And then at the very bottom, before you close your shape, you're just going to draw a little stem for your leaf. And this is a quick hack for you that I actually learned in art school. Whenever you're approaching something that you're drawing, never think of it as a full object, but rather try and break it down into shapes. Your brain can actually interpret that a lot easier and you'll actually get better results since you're trying to actually look at the shapes of the object rather than the object as a whole. And once you have your drawing down, the next thing we're going to do is prep our paints. So I'm going to be using three paints for this particular painting. And those are going to be Windsor Orange Red Shade, Opera Rose, and then Cadmium Orange Light Shade. However, you can use, once again, any colors that you desire. 
And before I even lay paint to paper, I want to prep all of these paints into more of a inky paint ratio. So basically I'm going to add enough water to make these paints really swirl and smooth on my little palette so that they are ready to pick up in my brush and lay on paper as soon as I need them. Once my paints are like basically prepped, the next thing I'm going to do is just a smooth gradient basically starting from the top of the leaf and going straight down. So this is very important, especially if you're a beginner, whenever you're trying to paint a smooth wash of something, you want to make sure you're going in one smooth direction or one fluid direction instead of placing paints in different corners or different places. If you do that, you're more likely to get blossoms and blooms or basically textures, which can create really cool, unique looks if you're going for that. But for me, I want to make my wash as smooth as possible. So I'm going to start at the very top of the leaf with my opera rose and then slowly transition to my Windsor orange and then finally end with my cadmium orange light shade. And then after I have painted that smooth transition, if I see something that I don't really like, or I see two colors not flowing the way I want to, I can always add color to those locations. I think one myth that we really have with watercolor is that we have absolutely no control. And it is true that watercolor really does have a mind of its own, but we do have some control when we're dealing with water or dealing with adding new paints, or even covering things up, especially when you're working with more mixed media. That's one reason why I love to use mixed media when I'm working with watercolor, because it gives me a little bit more of forgiving room if something goes awry. Now, the next thing that you're going to want to do if you're following along with me is make sure that this completely dries. So this is a really big mistake that a lot of beginners make. Um, they don't allow their paints to fully dry. And as a result, you get bleeds as well as you get kind of fuzzy lines. So the way you can check if something is completely dry is first off doing the look test. So the way you do the look test is basically you tilt your head slightly to a 45 degree angle. And if you see this shimmer or this kind of sparkling look on your paper, that means your paint is still wet. If however, you see more of a matte surface or basically a dry surface, that means your paints could potentially be dry. Now here is a mistake that I made for years that I did not realize. My paints could be dry at this point, but they might not be. So how do I tell at this point when I have this matte surface, if they're actually dry? Well, the way I can do that is actually touch the paper. You want to do this only if you see a matte surface. You don't want to do this if you see a shimmer surface, but basically you would touch the back of your hand to your paper. You don't want to touch your fingers to your paper because that has oil to it, can, which can act as a resist later on. You So don't touch your paper with the tips of your fingers, but rather touch it with the back of your hand. And if your paper feels room temperature, that means it's dry. However, if it feels cool to the touch, basically it has this nice cooling feel on the back of your hand, that means your paints are actually still wet. So if you lay paint on your paper at this moment in time, you're going to have bleeding lines, which we don't want. So make sure your leaf is completely dry before we go on to the next step, which is going to be glazing on top. And for that step, we really want nice, sharp lines. So at this point, my leaf is completely dry. So I'm going to actually take a pencil and with very light pencil lines, I'm just going to add the stem of my leaf, basically just split the leaf in half and then add little veins coming out from that stem. And an easy way to kind of think of these is like branches coming off of that stem and they're going to alternate back and forth from one side to the next. 
Once you have that guide down, the next thing we're going to do is actually glaze on top of our leaf little sections to make it look like it has a two tone dimension to it. Now for the very first section that I'm going to be doing is the very top portion. It's going to have like a little wedge and that top portion has more opera rose. You'll notice in the gradient and I want to use that same color on top. So what this is going to do is actually glaze on top of the previous color and make it more intense of a color. And that is what's going to create our two tone dimension or basically our more intense wedge of our leaf. So the very first thing I'm going to do is this top wedge. I'm going to paint just a very smooth layer of opera rose right on top. And then for my second wedge, if I look really closely, there's more Windsor orange in this particular section. So I'm going to actually use more of my Windsor orange as a glaze on top of this particular wedge. And then at the very bottom for my bottom wedges, those mainly have cadmium orange. You can see at the very bottom of my gradient. So I'm going to be placing cadmium orange on top of these two wedges. Now, while our paints are still wet, and this is very important, my paints have to be wet for this to happen. I'm going to add a little shimmer of gold on top, and I'm going to be using the Schminky Aqua Bronze, but there is another alternative. This stuff is pretty expensive, but there is a cheaper alternative. I believe it's called Pearl-esque. Um, that's only like $5 for five different things. And it's kind of the same product. So if you don't want to use the Schminky one, there is a cheaper alternative. But basically what you want to do is pick up some of this gold dust from inside of your container and then fleck it. So basically I am taking my brush and flicking it kind of like what you would do with a splatter effect with a toothbrush. I am flicking it at my leaf and whatever is wet, the gold actually will stick to and whatever is dry, it won't. Now here's another fun little tidbit for you. If you want to tint your gold a little bit so that it's not as prominent, you can actually take some of your paint color and paint it over top of your gold. It does not have to be dry at this point. You can actually do it right now while it's kind of a wet and wet um, texture. And then you can kind of tint your gold a little bit so it's not as prominent of a color. And once again, you're going to let this completely dry before we move on to the next step, which is once again going to be glazing. So make sure this layer is completely, completely dry before moving on. So the next thing that I'm going to do is just add little tiny wedges, basically add a little bit more of dimension or texture to our leaf with three small wedges of color on top. And once again, I'm going to follow that same rule that I had before where I'm looking at the gradient and trying to figure out what color was there originally and then layer that color, that same color on top. And after you have those three little tiny wedges, once again, make sure these layers are completely dry before we move on to the next step. And for our final layer, I'm going to be adding some mixed media. You can just leave this the way it is if you really desire to, or you can add just a little bit of pop to this. What I'm going to be using is a PH Martin's white bleed proof ink. And what I'm going to do is take my smallest brush. I am using a Princeton size zero over slash 10. So this is the smallest brush that I have. And this particular brush is a student grade brush. So it's actually not that expensive, but what I'm going to be doing is basically making little dots on my tiny wedges. And I'm going to do that over and over and over again on these tiny wedges to just kind of give them a little bit of a fun pattern as well as a fun sparkle. And the last thing that I'm going to do is just add a very tiny line of white 
to the edge of my stem. So not right on top, but basically to the edge. And I did it on the left side. This would basically be a highlight for our stem. And it kind of just helps the leaf pop a little bit more. And this is the final product. So I'm really proud of this. I actually really, really like this leaf. I wish all of my leaves outside of my window right now look like this one. I know eventually it will get like that, but right now we have like just a couple here and there. Actually, the footage that you saw at the beginning was from last year's fall. Um, and anytime it's fall leaves, I always take video of it because I absolutely love that time of year. Um, Fall is my favorite, or autumn is my favorite, favorite season. I absolutely love it. I have my birthday in fall. I have my wedding anniversary in the fall and just the colors and the leaves and even the holidays in fall are just, I love them. I love them so much. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this particular tutorial. I do want to say, if you basically enjoyed this and you want to do it for yourself and play around with it inside of watercolor misfit land we're doing watercolor challenges and this particular tutorial lines up with that we're doing the theme autumn and then i'm going to be doing like little keywords underneath it um that you can play around with if you are not in the season of autumn right now um, and you're maybe like, let's say in spring, there's going to be other little keywords such as cozy and just, um, I'm thinking about doing maybe coffee as one, or even you can do leaves as just green leaves for spring. Um, but I'm going to have some flexibility for the watercolor challenge. But since I'm currently in the season of autumn, um, I just kind of wanted to go that particular route. If you're watching this in the future and you just stumbled upon this video, welcome. Hello, my name is Carrie. And um, if you want to be involved in a future watercolor challenge, there's going to be more watercolor challenges happening. So once again, check out the link down below with watercolor misfit land. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give a like to this video. It really does help the channel. And if you aren't subscribed, please make sure to subscribe. And yeah, that's it. Happy painting y'all. And I'll see you next time. Bye.